Hey, what's up guys? This is Coach Ronnie. We're back. We're answering questions. Today's question is submitted by Trevor. Here's the question. What are the best exercises and movements for building arm strength as a catcher? All right, we got a catcher on our hands. So let's talk about how to build arm strength. So the first thing I want to talk about is the importance of footwork. Now, you know footwork is very important. I imagine you're getting coached up on how to properly move your feet and set your feet up when you're uh, transitioning from a receiving position to an actual throwing position. But the one thing that I want to approach this through is the mobility required through your ankles, specifically as you get in that bottom uh, of that start position. So I wanna talk to you about ankle mobility and how that's gonna play a role as you continue to develop and how important it is to pay some attention to that and making sure that you're, you're staying mobile. All right, Trevor, let's get into the first tip and answer. The first thing, like I said, is gonna revolve around ankle mobility. Now, when you go from a receiving position, um, most of the time you're gonna have your heels off the ground and your ankle mobility uh, plays a role, but not a massive role. But there are times when you're gonna want your whole foot on the ground. And so as an athlete, I want to highlight the importance of you having to work for this and spending time improving your ankle mobility. And so um, I want you to have access to both. If you need to get to this, then you have the ability to do that. So how we do that is basically, I like using a slam board. It's this thing here. And uh, most places, have one or two of these, and, uh, but if you don't, I'm gonna go over some other options. Basically what you wanna do, the routine, is you wanna put the balls of your feet on the slant board, and you're gonna take your kneecap and drive it past your third toe as far as, as, far as your heel allows. Basically, how far can you go without lifting your heels off the ground? So um, that is gonna be the goal here, and here's a wonderful rep scheme. You wanna think about 10. So you're gonna do 10 reps where you're driving forward, holding for one second at a very slow and controlled pace. You're gonna do 10 reps. And on the 10th, on the last one, you're gonna hold for 10 seconds. And so as you go through this, you're gonna feel a massive stretch through your, through your calves, your Achilles, and uh, everything right behind your shin bone. So, that's the goal here. You want, to do on, you want to do it on both sides, and all it takes is a little bit of attention. So doing that once or twice a week um, will pay massive dividends over time. If you don't have access to a slant board, you can use the corner of a wall, which basically looks a little like this. Again, putting the balls of your feet against the rack, keeping your heel on the ground, and you're gonna repeat the same process where you're driving your knee forward, and again, the same scheme, 10 reps with a 10 second hold at the end. All right, and if uh, maybe you have a plate, like a training plate, I kind of, I prefer this one over the, the wall one. Um, it just feels a little bit more comfortable uh, on the joint. Basically, you're gonna put the balls of your feet on top of the plate, keeping your heel on the ground, and repeat the same process as we talked about on the slant board. You're gonna drive your knee forward, knee in line with the third toe, going as far as your heel allows. And what's interesting is over time, if you dedicate yourself to this, you'll notice your ankle having uh, more access, more range of motion, which over time is gonna help you in that receiving position. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is shoulder health, arm strength. But the thing I wanna talk about is maintaining a healthy rotator cuff. Your rotator cuff helps support the, the shoulder joint, and so um, if we do a good job now, it's gonna pay off immensely over time. Think about this, as you get older, as you continue to play, the number of throws, the number of games you're gonna be expected to play it's, is going to increase over time, okay? You're only gonna be playing more games. You're only gonna be making more throws as you continue to get older and as you continue to progress and, and go up in levels. So improving and strengthening your rotator cuff right now is going to help you a ton and this is uh, a big key to being successful and having a good arm now there's a lot of like i said a lot of two a lot of options here but um it doesn't matter which one you go with um 
what you what you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that you don't have a band that's too strong that has a lot of resistance because when we are training the rotator cuff the key is to make sure that we don't go too heavy with the resistance considering that the rotator cuff are smaller muscles and don't require a lot of weight what happens is there's a thing called the size principle as the res resistance increases so as things get heavier more bigger muscles are recruited to help you get the task done so basically the bigger muscles start to take over as the intensity increases so in, in the rotator cuff example the the more over sorry the stronger the band the more now the deltoids start to help out and all the bigger bigger muscles around the arm and that's exactly what we don't want to necessarily be targeting um, at this point what we're looking for is a smaller finer rotator cuff muscles and so we need to keep the intensity, the, the resistance very low. The other thing is the tubing should have a, a good elasticity. Basically, it should have a long pull so you can have uh, resistance throughout the range of motion. Okay, so using a, a very tough, thick, heavy band usually doesn't have a lot of range of motion, a lot of length, and that's not going to be beneficial when training the rotator cuff. All right, so um, with that said, our, any recommendations? Um, I used to use Jaeger bands. I don't have any affiliation with Jaeger bands. I just know they do a good job. Um, their product is designed for, for overhead athletes. And so I think they're a great option, but it really doesn't matter. I think you just have to follow those two principles, uh, having light resistance and making sure that uh, they have effective length for what you're trying to train. That should, that should basically get the job done. All right, the first exercise that I wanna talk about is um, external rotation through the shoulder. Basically, you're gonna take your arm, you're gonna uh, create a 90 degree angle at your elbow, keeping your, uh, your arm nice and vertical. From here, opposite hand goes underneath the armpit, basically making sure that you keep that elbow snug and you're not drifting or pulling that elbow away, which changes the actual target of the exercise. So, keeping your arm down, posture nice and tall, you're gonna rotate out as far as you can and then controlling it back in. Another thing is you don't want to shrug, or sorry, not shrug, but you don't want to shrug. You don't want to lift your shoulder up, but you also don't want to have your shoulder out in front. You don't want to have a protracted shoulder blade, which is rounding your upper back, okay? So you want to think about having your shoulder more in a neutral position, if not back and down, and then from here, going through that full external rotation. So again, you want to keep the elbow in place, keeping the forearm, uh, we'll say horizontal, as you go through this. Again, having good length allows you to have resistance through the entire range of motion as you go through that. So doing one set of 20, so a lot of reps, is gonna do a great job of just building a lot of uh, uh, rotator cuff endurance, which is gonna help you have healthy, uh, a healthy rotator cuff. So again, one set of 20 before a warm up, or actually before your actual throwing, uh, is gonna do a big, a big service to keeping your rotator cuff healthy. So that is an awesome exercise. A question you might uh, think it about is, should I do both arms? And I think you should. I think you should have healthy rotator cuffs on both ends. Even if you're right-handed, I think your left shoulder should also get the same amount of attention. Um, it's about balance, and I think uh, having balance is critical for longevity. So you wanna play for a long period of time, I think the more you do to keep an even uh, proportional body, across uh, both side to side and, and uh, down and up, the better you're off you're gonna be. So that's a great exercise for you uh, to help improve rotator cuff strength. If you don't happen to have bands, it's okay. You can use um, some light weights. So these are one pound weights. You can use half a pound weight. If you don't happen to have these weights, just um, grab something light around the house, a can of a uh, can of food, um, anything that you can uh, find uh, around the house. You could also even uh, fill up some tennis balls with sand or anything like that. I think that's a great, uh, a great option. Um, so cut a hole in a, in a tennis ball, fill it up with sand, and now you have a little bit of weight to help uh, train your rotator cuff. So what you're gonna do, uh, we're gonna get in a hinge. So feet underneath your hips, you're gonna unlock the knees, butt back, back flat from here, thumbs up and you're gonna lift your arms up, keeping your arms long, thinking about pulling your shoulder blades back. Moving through that 
that. So that's a different exercise that I think you could use. You could do it with the band, or you can use it with uh, some light plates or some uh, lighter objects around your house. So those two things, they may not be uh, crazy impressive, but I'll tell you, Trevor, if you can do a good job of taking care of the smaller details, it's gonna pay off in the long run. It's gonna show itself on the field uh, over time, okay? Because you're gonna be the consistent athlete who's out there day after day being able to perform at a high level. All right, Trevor, let's get into part two of this answer. We're talking about leg strength, specifically being explosive. You have to think about time, okay? Time is one of the biggest elements here when we think about uh, pop time as a catcher. So you, you have to think about the time it takes for you to go from this receiving position to the position in which you release the ball. So the faster, the more, the more agile we are with our feet, the faster we're able to transition, the better off we're gonna be. So I'm gonna show you some exercises you can do to help improve uh, leg explosiveness. So the one disclaimer I do wanna give you, Trevor, is to make sure you're doing these things correctly. You don't wanna risk or try and reach for uh, a little, for another inch per se in your jump, or you don't wanna think about going a little bit harder and sacrifice any type of technique because that can lead to injury. And uh, that's the last thing you wanna do in the gym or when you're training. You wanna make sure you stay healthy and so you wanna make sure you're doing things right. The first exercise is just gonna be a box jump, okay? Now, boxes come in different heights and different materials. You have uh, wood ones, you also have foam ones. So find and use whatever you have available to you. But the thing is, you wanna make sure you wanna progress you slowly progress in height, and so uh, eventually leading up to things that are gonna really challenge you, and you're gonna definitely have to concentrate for it. So for me, this is a great place to start. Um, when you go through your box jump, you wanna make sure that you use that counter movement. Basically, you're gonna load your legs, your hips, so that they can uh, recoil and help you accelerate up into the air, uh, finishing on top of the box. So real quick, when you land on top of the box, you wanna make sure that you're landing in a good athletic position um, and eventually uh, landing and being in a flat foot position. Now, I'm not saying you need to be flat footed, I'm just saying you wanna land in a good flat footed position because that's gonna help distribute all that force uh, when you hit the box. So, again, good athletic position, whole foot on the ground, or sorry, whole foot on the box. So you wanna land on top of the box, whole foot on the box, uh, in a good athletic position. All right, so from here, we're gonna go from the ground, you're gonna load and explode. The thing when you go through this, you wanna make sure that you are consistent and that you are able to maintain control when you land on top of the box. Okay, so that is the box jump. You wanna think about doing smaller reps. You shouldn't be doing a ton of reps here. Uh, this isn't the rotator cuff, so we're not doing 20 reps. We're doing something like three to five, at most maybe uh, seven to eight reps, okay? With a lot of rest in between your sets, so you're thinking about maybe three to four sets with uh, four to six jumps. Somewhere in that range is gonna do a good job of helping to train your legs to be explosive, but not overdo it to where it becomes conditioning, okay? So that's the box jump. Once we get through the box jump, we need to start training laterally, okay? So you can use a hurdle, use anything that uh, you have available to you, but basically we're gonna start to jump sideways. So in this case, I'm just using this small hurdle. You can find something uh, taller as you continue to get better, but basically you wanna start training your ability to jump and push laterally. So in a good, uh, athletic stance with your feet under you. Again, we're gonna load, we're gonna explode and land on the other side. So, being able to push yourself laterally in a, in a more dynamic effort is gonna help you go from a catching position that is having your hips and shoulders square to the, to the pitcher um, and then have you be able to turn your torso and have you release the ball. So being able to go from um, a squared off position to a 90 degree position is gonna be effective if we can jump laterally effectively. So this is a wonderful exercise for you to just do. 
and help improve that lateral explosiveness. The third exercise is a 90 degree turn lateral jump. Basically, you're going to turn 90 degrees in the air and uh, it's going to be a little more athletic, it's going to be a little more demanding as far as spatial awareness, um, but this is going to start now to look a little more uh, like catching. So, uh, you're basically going to uh, turn 90 degrees and it's going to look like this. Okay, obviously this is a low height, but we can make this as hard as we want. I can add a second hurdle that forces me to jump over not only just one hurdle, but over two hurdles, okay? I can also increase the height of the hurdles. And so, in the demo, they might seem kind of easy, but trust me, this can be made very hard and can really start to challenge your ability to push off and rotate in the air. So the third exercise was just that. It was a 90 degree turn lateral jump. And now the fourth exercise is gonna be a kneeling jump. Basically, it's going to remove our ability to use our, our, our legs and mostly focus our, our force production to come from our hips, okay? And uh, we're gonna have a little help from our upper body, but mostly it's gonna depend on our hips, hips ability to generate force, to lift, our hips off the ground create separation so we can bring our feet underneath us. So it's gonna look like this. From the side, you'll get a good view. And to make this challenging, okay, is you wanna think about having your shoelace on the ground. Okay, so the kneeling jump is an incredible exercise to help, help build uh, leg explosiveness. And so you wanna think about starting to add those. Once you are really proficient, once you're really good at the first three exercises we talked about. All right, and the last thing I do wanna say about that is, again, landing mechanics look the same as any other landing mechanic when I'm jumping and landing from the air. So. If you look at the way I'm landing from a box jump, I land in a good athletic position with uh, contact on the ground with my whole foot. Okay, so athletic position, whole foot on the uh, ground. So the next exercise, and this is probably one of the hardest variations uh, to help train leg explosiveness, but also uh, rotational, uh, a rotational element in space, is gonna be a kneeling jump uh, to a catcher's throwing stance, okay? So if I'm gonna go from a kneeling jump into a 90 degree turn, uh, essentially mimicking you going from a receiving position to a throwing position. It's gonna look like this. From the side, you'll notice that my feet are landing um, on a line, and that's going to give you a good indication that you're landing in a good spot. All right, so that is the jump series that I want you to think about to add to your training because it's going to help improve explosiveness in your leg and that's going to help reduce the time it takes you to go from a receiving position to a throwing position. Again, make sure your technique is right. Don't rush through that. Don't try and go from uh, not doing anything to that very last drill. You need to train your body to adapt and get better and that's only going to have, happen with practice and uh, make sure you're safe with that. So there you go. We're going to use a medicine ball. It's my favorite. Here's what you're going to do. It's called the med ball catcher's shot put. It looks like this. Okay, 
So basically, you're going from a receiving position with the medicine ball, and you're going to use the right footwork to get to this throwing position. The goal here is to use hip and shoulder separation, which is going to allow you to create a sling, sling like effect which is going to allow you to improve velocity so um, the good thing about the medicine ball is that it's going to train your body to do just that without using bullets without you having to actually throw so um, it's going to help you to uh, keep your arm fresh so <clears throat> the goal here is to make sure that you're using a lighter ball too you don't want to use heavy medicine balls because that's going to change the mechanics Okay, and that's actually gonna work against you if we go too heavy. So you wanna think about using a lighter medicine ball, something like four pounds of work, six pounds, anything of that weight class is gonna allow you to do this exercise effectively. Just like the jumps, you don't wanna overdo it. This is not about endurance. This is about explosiveness. This is about putting the, the medicine ball through the wall. And so that only happens if we keep the reps low and have big reps. Keep, make sure you have a lot of reps. So, those are going to be the four things you're going to have to include in your training. I know it's a lot, but if you do that, you're going to be a much better athlete. We look forward to seeing how you improve from incorporating this into your training. Please keep us updated and stay tuned because we're working on a ton of stuff. We're working on programs. We're working on different resources for you to keep improving as a player. So, hey, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got, you got something out of this. Stay tuned, and I look forward to talking to you in the near future.